hey, we're going to make a, a quick video about, um, it's, it's a start with the Bill of Rights. And I know the Bill of Rights is a concept that, that needs to be broken down to individual rights. But in the short term, let's talk about why we have a Bill of Rights. And, and I want you to think way back when, when, um, when the English were passing laws that the, the colonists didn't like. Remember some of these laws, and I'll list a few of them here. Like the Boston Harbor Act. Where they shut down the Boston Harbor and, and wouldn't allow people to come in and out. Remember where they where they actually created something called the Quebec Act. And the Quebec Act is kind of important because uh, we may not have talked about a lot in class, but this was where they were restricting religious freedoms of people. And then we also talked about um, the Massachusetts Government Act. And the Massachusetts Government Act, real simple put, was an attempt by, by England to limit the amount of time or the amount of um, capability that the colonies had, specifically Massachusetts, in, in assembling and coming together and governing themselves and being able to meet and collaborate. There's another act called the Impartial Administration of Justice Act. And if you recall, when we, we talked about some of the things going on in the colonies, there was a big, big issue with people in the colonies um, being concerned about their individual rights when it came to a fair trial. And, 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 and the Partial Administration of Justice Act was literally taking people out of their their hometowns and forcing them to go across the ocean all the way to England or, or some other colony to be on trial where they lost access to witnesses, they lost access to evidence, they were taken out of their natural element, they were not guaranteed legal counsel, which means a lawyer, all these different things. I mean, those are big, big issues when you're worried about the legal system and, and possibly um, getting a fair trial in, within that legal system. And then we also, I know if you've studied anything about the, the revolution, Lexington and Concord came up. And I know Lexington and Concord, shots heard around the world, the first battle of the revolution. Well, not really, revolution hadn't started yet. But you're also talking about uh, Paul Revere. But remember, a big reason why the British were on the march in the first place was to go out there and take people's guns and, and to take away their right to defend themselves and, and to, to establish a well-armed and regulated militia. For, for their own self-defense and protection. And, and I granted, I, I know that some people have taken the whole idea of Second Amendment and the right to bear arms to a, to a different level that some folks don't agree with. But, but that individual right, that came from somewhere. And that came from the worry that you couldn't defend yourself. And here's another one. Remember the Quartering Act? Where... If you were a colonist, you were forced to house. That means you had to take a colonist, or a British soldier, I mean, and let them come in your home if they wanted to come in your home. And the British did this to offset some of their costs. They did this to uh, uh, help support their armies that were there to protect the Americans. But I I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not necessarily willing to give up my home and allow somebody else to sleep in my house that I don't agree with and I didn't invite in that home. And that's really what had happened. So when you start looking at some of these ideas and you look at some of these different laws that the Americans just didn't agree with, these laws, these acts that were created by the British were done in a way that really, really irritated and frustrated the colonists. Now, you don't have to do this, but I'm going to add a little bit of color in this because I like color on my notes. And I'm just going to add this for effect because I want it to look like a law. Piece of paper, maybe, on a parchment. Just real simple. But I'm going to write up here. Um, I'm going to label this. And I'm also going to write, I'm going to draw a circle around it. Just a real simple circle. 
I'm going to draw an arrow. I'm going to add some red because red is conflict. And I want you to remember that these were in direct contrast or conflict with the way the Americans believed that their colony should be run. And because of that, they really, really, really made the colonists mad by having these laws in place. And the colonists never forgot them. They were that angry. And because of these things, there's a connection we can make. The connection is to our own government. And when I say government, I'm talking about the U.S. Constitution. Now, I know for a fact that the U.S. Constitution is something you, you cover in school, but you may not always understand the connections, what inspired much of that Constitution. And sometimes good things can make inspiration, and sometimes bad things can. And these were bad experiences the colonists had. But as I talk about the U.S. Constitution, I want you to think about specific parts of the Constitution. These are called amendments. And the original Constitution was written in a way to provide a government, but that Constitution didn't actually guarantee individual rights and individual protections that people were worried about that our government would institute and force on to people. So there was a big, big debate on whether we should have the Constitution or not. So two different sides fought back and forth. You had the Federalists saying we need to have the Constitution. You had the Anti-Federalists saying no, we shouldn't have the Constitution. In the end, the Constitution was passed on a promise that there would be an addition of amendments. And an amendment is a change or changes to the U.S. Constitution. And to make people who were frustrated constitu constitution, even teachers forget how to spell sometimes, people who were frustrated about the Constitution not including those individual liberties agreed to pass it or support it if the first order of business that the new Congress would have would be to pass a set of laws or guarantees that would protect people from these things. And this right here is what leads us to the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights being the first 10 amendments. So when you think of amendments and you think of all these bad things that were happening to the colonists beforehand, understand that the first changes that our Constitution made was to address these issues. And that's what you should be thinking of. The Bill of Rights are the first 10 amendments. Now, we've made lots of amendments since then, but the Bill of Rights were the first two that initially and almost primarily deal with individual liberties and protections for people to make sure that our government does not trample upon those rights. So, so this is what you've got, a real short, sweet video just to give you an introduction to why the Bill of Rights were important to people and how they're connected to historical events that shaped the minds and hearts. And to be honest with you, the temperament of people who were in the colonists who would eventually go on to be the people who created our government. That's it. Thank you and good luck.